Hi, today I'm going to be working on making a replacement part for a friend's drafting table. Welcome to another episode. A friend of mine has a drafting table that is probably about 50 years old and he has a, a part on the drafting table that broke. Uh, you can probably see the places where it broke. He used some JB Weld to uh, connect it back together. Obviously that's not going to be strong enough because this is a clamp that keeps the, the top of the table uh, fixed so it doesn't rotate. Now I don't know a lot about the table but apparently it belonged to a friend of his who was a well-known illustrator in the Seattle area and uh, his friend gave it to him some time ago. He's now trying to give it back to the family because it has sentimental value to the family. And uh, just as he was getting it ready to uh, give it back to the family, he discovered that the clamp broke. So he asked me if I could use my CNC machine to replace the part. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the process that I took to design the replacement part and use my 3D printer to make test parts. And then in the next episode, I think there will be two episodes, I'm going to do the CNC machining. I had planned to do the CNC machining in this episode, but I discovered that the part was slightly thicker than the half inch thick aluminum material that I have. So I needed to order some material. Anyway, let's head to the computer and uh, get started. I want to show you a technique I use sometimes uh, when I'm trying to design an object and uh, well replicate an object like this. It's a little hard to do but what I'm trying to do here is basically sight down through one eye and line this up on the screen to see if I'm at least in the ballpark. And you know from this it, you can kind of tell that I'm in the ballpark. So it's a good way to give a first try and see how close I am. And then what I usually do is I 3D print the part out and let's take a look at the results of that. Here I have the original part side by side with the first 3D printed part that I did. And what I want to do is try to compare these two to see how close they are together. So what I want to do is line them up uh, the correct way. And once I line them up, it may be a little hard to see on the camera, but right here this needs to be a little bit more concave. And so that's uh, one area I'll work on. Now let's take a look at the other side. So again, I'll try to, to line these up. And you can see the top actually looks pretty good. And I'd say it's good enough for this application, which you know doesn't have to be exact. It just has to look good enough. One thing you will see is if we look at the bottom here, the hole here is smaller than the hole there. The reason for that is because I didn't add enough draft here. One of the things that you'll notice when you look at a part like this is that there's draft all over the place. So this tells you that this part was molded and the draft angle is such that it's easy to pull it out of the mold. Here the draft angle is about 5 degrees I think and here it's about 10 degrees. So I duplicated those angles on the computer uh, after this and the next print will show up with this uh, looking much closer to this. My plan is to make this part out of some uh, aluminum and I have, I think it's a half inch in, inch thick aluminum and what you can see here is that when I set it up like this, which is the way I want to set it up, it's, the aluminum isn't thick enough to have both this little pin on the bottom as well as the rest of the part. So my plan is to separate those and have the the main part have a hole in it and then I'll take a, a rectangular piece of aluminum mill a round piece on the bottom and then hammer this in and then once I hammer it in I'll come back and mill it and I'll show you that in the 3D design a little bit later. Here are the two parts that I have. Uh, I mentioned I have an insert and, and a hole and I also mentioned that the curvature on the bottom isn't quite enough. So let me go back to that sketch, the original sketch, and I'm going to rotate this to make it a little easier to see. Now I don't have everything fully constrained. Um, I certainly could uh, fully constrain things, but I don't really need to at this point. What I do want to do though is, is uh, bend this, this up a little bit more 
And you can't see it, uh, but I'm doing the, the sighting that I just showed you uh, with the part to see if it uh, looks about right. And then while I'm doing that, I'm adjusting these uh, different uh, control points to get about the shape that I want. I made some more progress on this, and uh, the changes that I made is I, I straightened this out a little bit. I added another control point here by right-clicking and saying, where was it, insert spline fit point, which allowed me to have this a little straighter here and then uh, uh, less straight there and control this a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this and print this out on the 3D printer to see how it's doing. So I'll just go ahead and save it back to there. And then when I head over to the 3D printer software over here, uh, it didn't reload it, so let me open it back up again. Okay, that looks good. So I'll go ahead and slice it. This is what it's going to look like. And then I'll print it out and uh, we'll come back. Here's the uh, new version. You can see that the bottom looks better now. It's pretty much the same size. It's not exact. There are also other differences. So if we look here, uh, you can see lots of little differences, like the curvature here isn't quite the same as the curvature there. It's more pronounced here. This is a little harder, the transition, than over here. And there are some other differences too. So if we line these up, um, like this, you can see that uh, I actually went a little too far in making this concave. The reality though is this is probably good enough for the part because it's not designed to be an exact replica, it's designed to be a functional replacement for what's there now. And if you didn't see these parts side by side, even if you did, you might not be able to tell that much difference unless you looked uh, carefully. Uh, one other difference is that uh, you can probably see that there's draft on the side of here again to make it easy to pull it out of the mold. Whereas here it's uh, straight up and down. And I did straight up and down here because that makes it easy to 3D print. Now, if I wanted to make this more accurate, I would add the draft here as well. Adding the draft here though is not going to change this functionally, so I may not add it. I may just go to the next step of working on the toolpaths and getting this ready to cut out of a piece of aluminum. So that's going to be the next thing I cover. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this episode, please click the like, bu like button below. Also, please subscribe if you want to be notified about new videos. And I'll see you next time when, uh, at least for this episode, we'll be working on the CNC machining of this part. Mm -hmm.